What's going on everybody? It's Ricky with Video Homicide back with day 11 of the 31 days of horror here at Video Homicide. I can't believe it's already day 11. I'm trying my best to not miss a fucking day. Uh, you know, I watched a flick yesterday that I've yet to make a video about, but I just watched this movie, so really wanted to talk about it. Real quick, uh, I had talked about this film and another one, this is it here, called uh, Black Magic 2, put out by 88 Films. Uh, I was unable to watch this version of the film because I don't have a region-free Blu-ray player, which sucks, but uh, I ended up finding it online, so I was able to watch it. And the film in question is 1981's Bewitched, directed by... Uh, Kai, Hu Le Kai Hung Ki, which is uh, a Hong Kong, excuse me, filmmaker. Amazing job with this film. Uh, it's, it's all about sort of the powers of good and evil. And there's this underlying uh, message, like at the beginning of the film, it has this little sort of narration at the end. It has the uh, uh, sort of like the, the closing act of the narration, if you want to call it that. And uh, I really did enjoy it, okay? So... This movie uh, had me at multiple times, like, almost in b disbelief of what I was seeing. And I like that when movies do that. And one thing I've learned about Asian cinema is uh, they know how to not waste time. You know, so if there's an instance, and it happens in this movie multiple times where, you know, I'll, I'll just use this for a reference, okay? So, like, let's say there's a scene where a guy's like, oh, I need a pack of smokes. And then the next shot is him walking back into the room with a pack of smokes. So it doesn't show him... You know, getting into his car, driving to the store, going into the store, all that kind of stuff. Which, you know, it can be a good time or a good thing at times. But, you know, in this movie, it works so good because it's already, uh, what is it, um, 101 minutes long. So just shy of two hours. And, you know, I, I feel like a lot of times for this, this 31 Days of Horror, I've been mostly going for stuff that I have not seen before. Uh, for the most part, and stuff that is, you know, reasonably timed, i.e. hour and a half, hour 45, movies like this. So, I, I did watch a movie yesterday that was over two hours, which I'll be talking about in day 12 of 31 Days of Horror. Um, but yeah, this movie is all about uh, this guy who, who ends up going to Bangkok. Like for, he, he, lives in, he lives in Hong Kong, goes to Bangkok, and ends up meeting this girl. Okay, and this girl is acting like she's all in distress. Like, this dude's just tr literally trying to buy a hot dog from, like, a hot dog cart. And she walks by, and she's, like, acting like she's all... Her foot's all fucked up. So, he's like, is everything okay? She says, can you help me upstairs? So, he helps her upstairs. And, um, you know, there's the language barrier. So, he's like, what do you do? And she says she's a typist. And he thinks when she goes like this that she means she's a massage... Like a masseuse or, like, you know, a fucking little how-do-you-do type of chick. And uh, he kind of puts the moves on her. She refuses... And then he leaves. And then he ends up going to this like little bit of a you know shopping district type area. And he finds this little chain that says love on it. And he brings it back to her and she accepts it. And they kind of have a little bit of a fling. But what we don't know is that she's having this fling in order to get a lock of his hair. And uh, some of his clothing. Find out his birth date and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she has him like kind of pose for these pictures. And you know it's weird because in the picture there's the... Uh, the image of the date that they met and or I don't know if it was a date of his birthday or nonetheless it's 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 kind of weird suspicious in a way so uh he goes back home and uh this woman has placed voodoo curses on him she goes to this voodoo priest and uses him to put these curses on him I forget the name of the curse in particular but there's a bunch of curses throughout this film like there's the lemon curse which is where they take a lemon and cut a slit in it and then they put a photo of, of the of the victim inside of it and then they put pins through it and it causes him ailments and grief and all that kind of stuff but uh this guy's he's living at home with his with i believe his mother and his young daughter and his young daughter's like acting fucking weird like she's you know if you've ever seen the movie um the exorcist the last exorcist which is that uh found footage exorcist film there's the point the part where that girl is like up on top of the cabinet in the corner of the room there's a scene much like that in this movie uh there's a part where uh the guys the guy is uh walking in the hallway and the little girl just comes up and starts stabbing the fuck out of him with this big butcher knife and then our guy wakes up and the girl's standing right by his bed with a huge knife and he's like what the fuck are you doing and she's like daddy can you help me peel this apple and has an apple in the other hand and i just thought that was fucking insanity man because i was not expecting it you know what i mean and this this guy I forgot to mention this guy had gotten a gift from the from the girl that placed the spell on him. It's like this, uh, almost like in Rosemary's Baby, that like weird locket thing. And it starts to secrete this ooze all over his chest. 
and uh, it, it's like making him all hairy and he's breaking out in these boils, but um, he ends up killing the little girl and then uh, the body's found. There's like a huge nine inch spike put in through her head. That's like the only way to stop the curse, but it doesn't stop the curse. So uh, now this guy is caught and he gets sentenced to the death penalty by hanging and uh, he ends up asking for the assistance of this one detective and he tells the detective the story. The detective kind of believes him, so he goes to uh, si uh, not Singapore, he goes to Bangkok to uh, sort of interrogate or see what the fuck's going on and that's where he gets uh, entangled with this voodoo priest as well and uh, spells get put on him, much like the lemon spell I was saying earlier. Um, he ends up going to this like good priest in order to you know help ward off the bad priest and this good priest gives him this little like gold leaf from a statue of buddha and he puts it in his pocket and he kind of forgets about it but it comes back later of course and uh there's a really good like 10 minute scene where the good priest is telepathically fa telepathically facing off with the voodoo priest and it's awesome because there's like a crazy scene where he's like uh the bad priest is like basically getting his ass kicked and then he runs over to this big barrel he has in his like little fucking area whatever you want to call it and he opens up the lid and there's all these dead babies in there and he takes this big bowl and he like submerses it in it and he gets like the the juice or the, the broth of the babies and he drinks it pours it all over himself makes him even more powerful and uh the good priest is defeated but not killed and then the good priest says you know i'm gonna need like seven more days in order to uh you know get strong enough to fight this guy again so now it's basically up to the the detective to figure shit out and uh the voodoo priests start placing spells on the detective and much like uh you know the other guy he's starting to get all these ailments he's getting like this feels like he's having a heart attack or like a crazy migraine and all that stuff it's all because of this voodoo priest he's got like a this one spell where he has like this little monkey skull and he like hits it on top of the head and the guy gets a headache and a little voodoo doll where he sticks a pin in the hand and the guy, his fucking hand goes all ape shit. It's cool, man. This is a good flick. And one of the scenes that really sticks out to me, other than the little girl stabbing the shit out of her father, uh, is uh, the detective's wife gets a spell put on her as well. So there's a part where she's in her kitchen, like cutting up meat and stuff. And uh, she turns around to the fridge and then turns around again. The knife is floating in the air and it flies at her, stabs her in the chest, and it misses her heart by like a centimeter, the doctor says. Of course, it's always a centimeter or millimeter. But uh, it's cool because the detective, uh, he has to leave because they found this voodoo priest, or they think they, he, you know, they think they found it, think they found him. So he says to his buddy, here, can you stay here with my wife? And he's like, yeah, sure. So he's sitting there reading a the newspaper, the nurse comes in, and uh, she kind of gets like, in a, into a voodoo trance as well and goes to attack the wife and this the, the the friend of the detective just like fucking sidekicks this old lady she goes fucking flying and he just pulls out his gun and he just fucking blasts her like six times it's awesome i love that scene uh i feel like i loved all of the scenes in this film i especially loved uh at the end of the movie where the final showdown between the two priests happens in like this bus station and uh it's really cool and like the bad priest knows he's fucked and uh, it's pretty cool because, like, it turns out that the bad priest is actually, like, this really, really old woman that has, like, this bat placed, like, this bat is inside of her. So when she dies, finally, a bat comes out of her mouth. And then the, the good priest just, like, captures the bat and then just, like, walks out of the fucking bus station like nothing happened. Even though, like, the place is fucking destroyed. But really badass movie. So if you, if you get a chance to watch Bewitched, pick it up through 88 films, but make sure you have a region-free Blu-ray player. Otherwise, you'll be fucked like I was. So, I also have uh, Black Magic 2, which is a sequel to Black Magic 1, obviously. So, uh, hopefully I can watch these two flicks eventually. And uh, I don't think they'll make it into 31 Days of Horror, but they'll definitely make it into a, a review of some kind somewhere on the timeline. But uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. Be sure to leave a 666 in the comments. And with that being said, adios.